everyone. How are you today? We are here at Thursday, so it's time for yoga. For yoga today, you're once again going to need your chair. Make sure that it is someplace where it won't slip. We're going to stand up a little, sit down, um, stand up. So I want you to make sure that you're in a space where you're not going to slip and sl slide. Um, in fact, I'm actually going to go ahead and take my socks off. If you're on carpet, it's probably easier very slick floors. Okay. Also, if you want to go ahead and grab some water, I don't think we're going to be doing anything too strenuous today, but just in case you need to hydrate, 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 hydrate. Very important. Even after doing a chair yoga routine that we take some water. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and start standing and just get our balance out of the way. And that's going to help us focus for the rest of class. Okay. So I want you to come to a wide mountain position. So that's going to be feet underneath your hips. And we are going to, if you were, if you took stability yesterday and we talked a lot about proprioceptors in our feet, and stuff we're gonna try to go ahead and activate those if you haven't seen that class yet I'm gonna explain it so part of balance is that we have these receptors in our feet proprioceptors which help our brain understand where we're at in space and that's a super important skill to have for balance in this balance we're gonna weight shift so we're gonna take our our base of support outside of our normal place where we would balance um, we're gonna move over, I'm sorry, our center of gravity over our base of our support, and we're gonna move into a tree. When we move into that tree pose, it's very important, we're gonna um, really start to activate those proprioceptors. So it's gonna be a longer tree. If you would like to have a chair to hold this tree, then go ahead and take the chair over to the side or behind you, whatever is appropriate. So as I said, feet hip distance apart, let's lift those toes up, spread them out, and then sit them back down. And as you do, I want you to press into the ball under the big toe on both your feet for me. And just try to isolate that press into the ball of the big toe. All right, now let's inhale and lift those toes back up. Remove that pressure from the ball, big toe, and let it go out to the side of your foot. And then we're gonna lower those toes down and I am going to ask you to try to pay attention simply to the outside of your feet. You might feel your arch rise up a little. Now go ahead, side of the feet and push your big toe down. Good. So what we're doing is we're just trying to wake our feet up. As we age, over 25 just it's a little harder to get that connection all the way down to the feet so we're gonna um we're building up those channels take your feet out a little wider so we're gonna go cut ahead and make this a foothill mountain pose so our feet are outside our hips now just rock back and forth just a little i'm lifting my toes as i come back rear ends going back just a little and I'm coming up off my heels as I come forward. So there's that base of support and it's moving in that frontal plane. Now let's settle down and we're just gonna come left and then we're gonna move right. Making sure that we're not locking out those knees. Go ahead, let's bring our hands into a nice yoga pose. So bring your hands into mountain. I'm just shifting. I want you to come back to the center. And now we're going to do a combination of those four moves. So we're going to come forward, press the balls of the feet into the floor, and then we'll draw a circle over to the left. Lift our toes only. Keep the ball of your feet down as you go back. And then we're over to that right. And we're just going to reverse one time. Just preparing these feet for balance. As you come back, just lift your toes. That will take you back far enough. You don't need to go further. Excellent. Let's pull it up. All right, let's go to chair. So your chairs are, excuse me, your trees. Our trees are all going to look very different. 
Um, I'm going to do, I call it the Indian tree. If you've taken it with me before, I call it the Indian tree. And what I'm doing is taking my left heel right on up to that right ankle. I am maintaining the toes of my left foot on the floor to help me balance. I'm going to, throughout this exercise, maybe lift up just a bit, just to challenge that balance and get me standing on one foot, but it's not important that you do that. I'm pressing back my left leg as much as my hip allows. So this isn't assisted. This is as much as my hip is allowing. Follow any hip precautions you may have. Belly button up and in, tailbone down, hands back to the mountain. And then let's bring them up on Mili Mudra right in front of your chest. And we're not pressing here, so it's okay to have those wrists up a little higher. Let's just breathe. Steady in and out. One more time. And now I'm going to slide my foot up just a little. My heel is touching the side of my calf, but I'm not pressing. So I could even take my foot out if I needed to. Okay, let's come down. Let's just go over to the other foot. So if you need to take a shift in between, I'm all for it. Once again, I'm going to set it up. Toes down heel right above your ankle, spreading toes out. We're going to use mobility, our ability to move without assistance, to press the leg open as much as we can. Hands to mountain, and then up and around. We'll bring them all the way on Jali Mudra. Three breaths here. Don't fight the sway. Trusting those accessory and stabilizing muscles to help us stay upright. Okay. It's how they learn to work. We have to challenge them a little. Let's come up maybe an inch off the floor. Maybe you like this out to the side, this Apsara, this temple dancer pose. Um, I also made that name up. All right, put it down, shake it all out. All right, so let's, we're gonna come to chair now and then we'll come back up just because I wanted to have some um, sit to stands. Let's come through chair. So your feet can be anywhere from together, big toes together, heels out, or wide stance. It's gonna be up to you. We're gonna act like we're sitting in the chair. We're gonna try to hold a hover above the chair for about one count, and then we're gonna sit down. You can reach back and use your arms if you like, or take your arms up traditional chair, hands out. This is gonna have a little bit more balance. If you want a more of a challenge, cross. Okay, and I'm gonna start to lower my rear ends back towards the chair. My knees are pulling back behind my toes. I'm gonna lift that chest just a little and pull my belly in and then bring it all the way down to the ground. Good job. So come forward, find that nice secure place to put your feet. We are going to start with an overhead stretch because I meant to do this on Tuesday and I forgot and then I have been fretting over it ever since. So I wanted to make sure that we got this in. I'm gonna take the left arm up first and I'm gonna to reach towards the sky. I'm not reaching over, I'm going directly up. Feel the stretch in this side body. And then bring it down. Take your right arm up. Let it go. Let that shoulder come up towards your ear if that's going to happen. And bring it down. There'll be time to depress our shoulders later. Reach up. I mean high. Push the back of those thighs. Push your hamstrings into the chair. Push your sits bone into the chair. Try to stretch from the lower body. Reach up. Good job, guys last time and then we're gonna 
We're gonna do double arms. Reach. And bring it down. Let's go ahead and just shake side to side. Now, of course, if that doesn't feel good on your shoulders, I don't want you to go too high. We could come here. So let's do everyone do that. So arms are gonna go up, they're in front of your shoulders a little. And we're, I call it kneading like a cat. So you could do your cat claws up. It's actually good for your hands. Now, I'm gonna start to take my arms up higher because that's what my shoulders are feeling they want. And I'm gonna turn my palms towards each other. I'm making those, those claw shapes with my fingers. Let's go ahead and get that bonus hand stretching going. And now I'm gonna take my arms up as high as I can, reach those fingertips up, and now pull your shoulders out of your ears. Feel how that draws your arms out to the side. And let's go ahead and bring them down. Shoulder rolls up, around, and down. Maintain posture. Up, around, and down. Up, around, and down. Let's reverse. Up, around, and down. And one more. All right, go ahead and take that left hand right across your body for me and just give a little assistance with that left arm. And if we could do the other side, that would be great. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit more um, involvement with the arms again. I'm gonna, we'll run through one option first and then we'll take it up um, to full goddess. So coming out to goddess means that we're gonna open our hips up out, okay? This can also be done seated if that's what you need for your hips. I'm gonna start to walk my feet out a little bit, okay? I'm gonna come forward in my chair and make sure that my feet are nice and secure. And I'm on a diagonal, diagonal which means you have plenty of space here at this side, okay? So goddess stance, let's come back to those proprioceptors. Put the ball of the big toe, press your big toe, the three middle toes, your pinky toe down, the outside of your foot, your heel, and your inner sole. Now draw that belly up and in for me. We're gonna do five belly fire breaths. Let me do one first, inhale. So hopefully you're alone and you're not spitting any kind of bad stuff into the air. Um, that's why we don't do the swimming class a lot. But remember you're pumping your air out. So think of a, um, one of those billows, billow breath, okay? We're gonna do one set of five, which means we're gonna inhale for five and then we're gonna puff out five times. So take a deep inhale in. Here we go. Good. So what you're doing is waking up that belly. You're working your abs a little, and we're also um, working our breathing accessory muscles there, our diaphragm. Okay, here we go. Ready? Goddess. Take your left hand and reach it down towards the floor. Let's keep our shoulders nice and even as we reach down. So this is to keep this arm from being up in the air. I'm just gonna place it here on my right thigh. What I wanna do is not try to reach and touch the floor. I wanna open my chest and get a lateral stretch. The area that we're stretching is from your underarm down through your intercostals here and then side body. You're also strengthening your core and side body. That's what's keeping you from falling. So there's an engagement here to hold ourselves up, still get that stretch and take that rotation if you like. Now we'll come up. Let's do the other side. So I'm just gonna reach down. You can stay here. I'm gonna show you how I use touch to um, assist myself. So right now, while we're limited on what we can do as far as adjustments, it's really important to learn these little adjustments for yourself. Okay, 
so you've engaged your belly. So take your hand to your belly to remember that the belly is engaged. We're then gonna take our hand to our shoulder and we're just gonna make sure we push it back a little so that our shoulders are kind of even here. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is just run my hand down my side just to help me remember why I'm here and also getting at that bottom rib and your hip when it's time to come up, I'm gonna try to squeeze here to bring myself up. That's actually gonna work your front abs and a little bit of your back, which is an, um, another area of abdominals that we need to work. Let's do that again. Option to stay there or to bring your arms up to goddess. Pull your shoulders together, palms are forward. So as we tip, we'll let that left hand reach down like it's been doing, but we're gonna keep this right arm in a goddess shape as we come over and you're breathing there's no holding of the breath now as you come up you're going to start to bring left hand back to goddess so that hopefully it comes back to this nice even goddess I'm going to start to tilt the other way I have an unfair advantage because I can see myself in the camera it's like having a mirror here okay so if you don't have a mirror this is what I suggest later doing this pose so you can see yourself in the mirror so that when you come up, you can make sure that you're trying to keep those elbows nice and even. Go ahead and press your shoulder blades together for me. Deep press in and release out. Do that again. Pull the shoulder blades together like you're trying to squish a pencil. Feel that stretch in the shoulders. Bring it out. We're gonna tip our hands down to an inverted goddess. We'll take them down. Palms towards the back if it's okay. We're gonna lift them up. This is the last thing with the arms. Let's take it down and let's take an extension. Just open those arms out, palms face back. Bring them in and drop them. Go ahead and roll everything out and let's stand. So walk your feet in. We're gonna come up through that chair pose. That's so gonna be a reverse of how we got down. Once again, feel free to use your arms if you if you want to, or you can try um, to do this. If you feel a little unsteady coming forward, remember you can always have another chair in front of me. We should have lots of lots of props at home, right? So get tall. Let's lean forward. Maybe you're gonna take your arms up and maybe if you want, you can just stay here, press into the floor and act like they're gonna come up, but don't actually move. We're gonna lift up to chair, knees are back behind those toes, bellies up and in, and now press to standing for me. Please drop your right hand down, lateral fold, and bring it up lateral fold and bring it up I think that's our last lateral fold up and down and as soon as I said that I realized that I have made a terrible mistake because our standing pose is going to be somewhat of a lateral fold we're gonna do trikonasana triangle pose I love it I love the triangle shape you can do that um, and what we're doing is making a bunch of triangles with our body we are going to make sure that we have our chair as a prop and we are going to take the leg closest to the chair in front of the leg of the chair, if that makes sense. Okay, so you're here. Trust me, it's going to work out. Now I'm going to heel toe my foot back about two feet. Okay. You can go as low as you want with this, especially if you are doing chair yoga, preparing to go back to work and you have a nice triangle, go for it. Now watch my back foot. I can either have the foot straight pointing towards me, or I would have my toes turned in slightly. There is a little move here where someone has attached a string to our hips 
and is slightly pulling back and there's a little dip in the front. And then bring it up. That's gonna make you feel a lot better in this pose. Let's do that again. Take hold of your pants, little pinch, um, right hand, I'm on the right hand, but your, your front leg is gonna, you're gonna take your pinky right below your hip and you are gonna pull that string back and fold over your finger. And we'll come back up. Now for triangle, even though this is the position of our legs, we are going to try to turn our bellies towards each other. I want you to go ahead and make that shape and make sure nothing feels bad. If this is too tough on your hips, go ahead and kick that leg back for me. Here we are. So we'll take our arms out, but I want you to remember that pull and that tuck. We're going to pull tuck, reach out as far as we can, and now find your chair. You can have a flat hand on this chair, or you can come up onto your fingers to build hand strength. Top arm comes to your shoulder and rolls that shoulder back just a little. Now, you can look at me. You can look up over if this is okay. You can look down. What's the least, the least um, favorable? But what I want you to try to do with your neck is not this. I want us to remember that our neck, cervical spine, it's part of our spine and it needs to stay in line with our spine as much as possible. I'm going to stretch and extend up to the sky. I'm going to think of all the beautiful triangle shapes that my body is making. I'm going to take a few deep breaths. And then we're going to bring hand to hip so that we can start to push those hips forward and rise up. Good job, guys. So let's set ourselves up for the other side. I'm going to walk around. I don't have the space. I'm coming home next week, guys, so we don't have to do this much longer. We'll have all the space in the world and cats. I know some of you like my cats. They'll be back. So I'm um, going to set myself up again. Now, your sides are different, it's, uh, especially your hips. Okay, Hips can do wonderful things on one side and on the other side be like, eh. So I want you to make sure you play with your hip shaped here. That front foot, the toes point directly away, and that back foot, let's see if you can see me, that back foot is either turned in slightly, so think seven o'clock, or if you need to open that foot so it's perpendicular to the front foot to be able to get your torso towards me, then I would like you to do that. Find the leg shape where you are steady. Okay, so in any pose, we start with steady, then we check our alignment to make sure our alignment is good, and once that's set, you can elongate, expand in these poses, and really make them yours in the sense that they benefit you in the way you need it. So let's go ahead and start our movement. Go ahead and grab your hip. Go ahead and get your pinky tucked at that hip crease, so not your hip bone, hip crease. And we're going to pull back and tip. Keep your torso towards me and come up. Now, by all means, you don't have to do this movement each time you move into a triangle. Eventually, it will become second nature to you. Reach. Bring that hand down. That's part of that safety. Make sure you're either on your fingertips or flat-handed. We're going to release this right hand. Move that shoulder back. Let me see your belly buttons. This light shining forward out of your belly button. Think of how much life your life force was there at one point. And extend up. Now, 
how do we elongate? What do I mean? How do I expand? I'm in my pose, got my alignment set up, but now I'm going to reach that arm up as high as I can and I'm gonna press my fingers down into that chair and I'm gonna feel that engagement in my belly, okay? And I'm strong on my legs and I've started pushing those points of the feet that we talked about into the ground and now I'm elongated in the pose. And I know that I'm okay here because I can have steady breath. So it's a steady breath. If I was, <gasps> I've gone too far and I would make adjustments. In this case, what I would do is put a sturdy book or maybe even a pillow on top so that I don't have to go down this far. All right, so we've done that. I promised a breathing video. That's gonna be a separate video that I'm going to upload. So we're not gonna include it in here as we start to close our practice. You'll um, have it right after this. It's a reminder of how to do alternate nostril breathing, which is a great, a great form of breathing that we can do. It's gonna take you two minutes to watch, okay? So here, let's finish with a meditative arm movement. Let's inhale our arms. Let's just do the movement first. Let's take our arms up and overhead. Palms touch and they press together as they come down to Anjali Mudra. So the elbows line up with wrist at your heart. Tip those fingers forward and reach forward about 45 degrees with these arms. Okay, crown of the head reaches two. Now we're gonna open the arms back as we sit up with a nice flat back. They pause at our shoulders, and then we're gonna press our arms back as far as is comfortable. We're really opening our chest here. This is great for Parkinson's, guys. Palms up, inhale this time. Exhale as you draw down. Inhale as you tip and press and exhale as you lean forward and surrender into the pose. Inhale as you expand and open and exhale as you stretch and open to the world. Again, inhale, reach up, take everything is, that is good in the world. Exhale, you're drawing that down to you. Inhale, you're sending it out into the world while simultaneously sucking that into your heart. And then exhale. There we go, and we surrender. Inhale, open to grace. Exhale, continue to open to that grace. So that's the meaning of that sequence for me. It could have a different meaning for other people, I don't know, but that is what I think of when I run through this. Our moments of silence and prayer can be moved into movement. We can use movement as meditation. Take your arms up. Just bring them down Anjali Mudra, guys. We're gonna sit tall. We're gonna close, look over your left shoulder. back to center. Look over your right shoulder. Back to center. We'll take a deep inhale in together. Let's ohm. Let's ohm since we're in home. We'll ohm it out or you can just deeply exhale. So take a deep inhale in. Take a little bow to ourselves and to each other for the gift of shared practice. Namaste. Thank you guys. I will see you tomorrow for some silver sneakers and I have an exciting silver sneaker announcement to make. I'll drop that on you tomorrow. 
please make sure you take a couple minutes to watch the breathing video after this, okay? Love you guys. Take care. See you soon.